Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Zoo. You're right, sir. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. Speaking of science, all right, I'm going to try and tackle a very sensitive third rail issue. We're talking about space agencies and gender sensitivity, words, definitions, meanings, and semantics. And the two people we'll be playing with today are Phil the Blue Beetle Plate, or Blue Pill Phil, and the wonderful Emily Lockdawalla. Apparently now, one of the big new pushes is for proper language. Finding new language for space missions that fly without humans. Okay, so this is ridiculous already. So we have to find new language that does not offend human beings for our non-human space exploration. I don't know if you've been keeping up, but all space exploration now is done by robots. We haven't had manned space exploration, I'm sorry, we haven't had crewed space exploration since 1972, which is like 43 years, man. You know, like, for whatever reason, they're just like, yeah, screw humans, man. We're just going to do everything robots because uh, having humans do stuff would be inspiring. Unmanned, robotic, unpiloted, uncrewed, unoccupied, unhuman, drone, autonomous, crewless. <sighs> Somebody ask shoeless Joe Jackson what he thinks. Historically, human spaceflight was described using the words manned and unmanned, but NASA has shifted has shifted to using gender neutral words to describe human space exploration. Since 2006, the NASA History Program Office Style Guide has stated all references referring to the space program should be non-gender specific, e.g. ergo, human, piloted, unpiloted, robotic. The exception to the rule is when referring to the Manned Spacecraft Center, the predecessor to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, or any other official program name or title that included manned, e.g. Ergo, Associate Administrator for Manned Spaceflight. And I always thought the manned came from manos, like the hands of man, like the hands of mankind, you know? I actually didn't think it meant gender. I thought it meant, like, hands of manos, that bad movie that was on MST3K. Why is this important? The words that we use to describe human endeavors matter, and professional organizations are working now to shape a future that is more inclusive of people who are not male or white in their totally human excluding space exploration program. Did I get that right? So that while all of humanity is being excluded from space exploration, we want to make sure that everybody is included in the exclusion. Oh my god, this is so 2015. And hey man, I totally support, like, call the crap, whatever you want to call it. You know, offend the least amount of people. But the fact that everybody isn't offended that we have a space program who can't put a human being into its own international space station is weird and offensive. We have a space program that built a $500 billion hotel in space, the International Space Station, and they can't even get underwear and toothpaste to those people, man. They gotta hire the Russians. <laughs> you guys are over here like, should we call it crude? Should we call it uncrewed? Should we call it screwed? Should we call it unscrewed? Well, let's just call it foobar. Let's just call it snafu bar, man. Our snafu bar space exploration program. That works for me. Situation normal, all fudged up, fudged up beyond all reasonable, fudged up beyond all recognition. As one example, the National Council of Teachers of English writes, word choices often reflect unconscious assumptions about gender roles. As professionals, we all need to examine our language to reduce or eliminate choices that silence, stereotype, or constrain others. Okay. Man, I've been made fun of my whole life. I've been beat up so many times. You know, like, sometimes a little bit of resistance is good. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't make every single NASA word gender neutral. I'm just saying, eh, it's a screwed up cold world that only gives a crap about money. So, sometimes, I don't know, it's this whole, the word, like, blaming words, like, yes, yeah, the reason our space program sucks so bad is because we called it manned space. Now, if we'd called it uncrewed space, then, you know, we would have gotten, like, 30,000 more women, and we would be on Mars headed to Saturn. You know, we'd have popsicle stands on Jupiter if we would have called it crude 20 years ago, 40 years ago, right? That's just, to me, that's ridiculous. Is that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not commenting on the, like, gender safe words, really. I'm commenting on how ridiculous it is to discuss 
whether it's going to be manned or unmanned or crewed or uncrewed, when humans aren't involved in human space exploration, when there's no human space exploration anymore. That should be the discussion, man. And I don't know if I'm going to get through these articles because it's just ridiculous that all these science and space and exploration writers aren't like, you know what, man, our space program is just so weird. You know, why are they in love with a robot? <clears throat> like, haven't they ever seen or heard science fiction? All right, let's try Dr. Phil freaking plate, man. A lesson in crude language. That, that was a good pun. That was a good pun, Phil. That was a good pun. A lesson in crude language by Phil plate. In many ways, NASA is slow to change. Yeah, I'll agree with that one. Not surprising, it's a government agency. All right, that's a good one. You're on a roll, Phil. For one thing, and for another, for one thing. And for another, being a tad conservative isn't such a bad feature when you're trying to put people into space safely. And being a tad conservative isn't such a bad feature when you're trying to put people into space safely. But even NASA is ahead of a lot of the curve when it comes to language used when talking about space flight. The terms manned and unmanned have fallen out of favor with the space agency. Well, I could have told you that. The term manned or crude fell out of favor 42 years ago, man. And it doesn't look like they're coming back anytime soon. Like that whole, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to Mars in 20 years. Shut up. We're going to Mars in 20 years, dude. Just shut up. Don't ask me more questions. We're going to Mars in 20 years. Your children's children are going to think it's cool. All references referring to the space programs should be non-gender specific. The only exceptions are for names of buildings and programs. These are part of the expression grandfathered in. You mean grandparented in? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, let's stick with the program. I think this is great. Apostrophe. Words matter. Yeah, let's see how much sparkle, glitter, and polish we can put on this turd of a non-human space program, right? You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, I'm just pro-humans in space. I'm pro-going to the moon. I'm pro-going to Venus. I'm pro-going to Mars. I'm pro-going to Ceres. But, like, let's send people out there, bro. With video cameras that take, like, 60 frames a second. It's like a cliffhanger. Sweet. Sweet.